in Cheltenham because I've been asked to come here, but I'm here because I'm interested in the whole issue of what's a good diet, what's a good diet for health, good diet for the environment. And it sounds very simple, but it's actually very complicated. And I think we're all over the place, culturally, in production, and also in academia. I don't think we've given the public good answers. Do you think our food choices can have a negative environmental impact? Probably to a certain extent. Yeah, I don't think I know. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, I, I know our food choices have a, can have a negative impact. Essentially, in everyday English, food security means everyone having enough to eat adequately for health. Uh, but actually, what we now need to mean by food security is eating within environmental limits. I think the priority is to try and link health and environmental sustainability in ways that benefit the planet and people. I thought I sort of thought about the topic, but the things that they were discussing sort of it just sort of opens your mind a bit about different aspects of it. I thought it was very, you know, all the speakers were very open-minded and very practical, um, and I didn't feel that I was being preached to at all. It would make me sort of reconsider some of the arguments for and against, and consider more closely some of the environmental issues that um, were being talked about. What do you think contributes a greater proportion of human-generated greenhouse gas emissions globally? Do you think it's all transport, including air travel, or livestock farming? I don't know. I'd say transport. Tra yeah, travel. Uh, livestock farming. Livestock farming. I would have said the air transport, but I'm guessing it's yeah. farming. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to go with livestock farming. Yeah? yeah. Correct answer. Correct. When the uh, current UK government came to power, it enacted several cuts. Um, and unfortunately one of those cuts was to uh, axe the Sustainable Development Commission. And one of the chief recommendations, not the only one, but one of the chief recommendations of that uh, commission was to advocate for uh, reduced levels of meat and dairy consumption. What is very, very clear is that rising demand for and production of uh, livestock is a real problem on many counts from the perspectives of greenhouse gas emissions, biodiversity loss, land degradation, water pollution and so forth. Actually we need to look at the opportunity loss of the cost of land, so not just how do animals directly contribute to land use change, but if they weren't already here, what could we do with the land instead? If you look at uh, a well-planned vegan diet as opposed to the typical British meat and dairy based diet, you need only about one third the fresh water, about one third the fertile land and about one third the energy to produce the vegan diet compared to what you need with a typical meat and dairy based diet. I'm someone who argues increasingly forget agriculture, it's horticulture, it's about plants, it's about making sure we uh, live within and with other species. Definitely, 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 we're going to have to dramatically alter our meat consumption. Kind of made me think a bit more about veganism and especially how I can make my diet more environmentally friendly. I already sort of tried to sort of eat meat only sort of once or twice a week, but I think um, if it's more informed, you're more likely to sort of carry it through as well. Some scientists argue in favour of continue, continuing meat eating because, well, first of all, many are actually involved in the industry of uh, producing animals for human consumption. Many areas of science now are in conflict with that, with that view and uh, climate scientists, um, nutritional scientists are being forced to, th to rethink that view of uh, human-animal relations. We have a lot of habits with our food. We think we're, we're choosing very freely each day what we eat, but we eat what we were brought up with, what we see our friends eating, what um, is advertised on the television, what we see when we walk into the supermarket. Perhaps the biggest obstacle is, is that social norm of, of meat as being what humans do. The Vegan Society coming to Cheltenham to, to, to hear from the audience and to get a wide range of views is I think a really important approach.
We're looking forward to working with the society next year uh, to do something more innovative and interesting and continue the relationship. And we thank you very much. I think I'm very hopeful about the future and the way the movement can go, but I can't make predictions, obviously. Uh, I feel like, uh, you know, it could be a hostage to fortune if I do that. But I am optimistic at this point. Yeah.